You're stuck inside and you can't get out, but you feel like being free. Grab a witch and make a switch and see what you can be. That's Halloween, witch magic Halloween. You are listening to the last roundup horror show. I am Frank. With me as always is Jason Miller. Yeah. And John Walmsley. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> he always comes in like a ninja turtle. It's, uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we got some reviews going this time, guys. A bunch of a bunch of solid movies this time go around. Not really any mm-hmm. any uh, bad watches, but um, I watched them all this time. By the way, watched them all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> No Wikipedia for this guy. No. Um, <laughs> let's start off in 1986, Slaughter High. Eight people are invited to their old high school for their 10-year reunion where a fellow former student, disfigured from a prank gone wrong, is out to seek revenge. Written and directed by George Dugdale, Mark Ezra, and Peter Mackenzie Lytton. Uh, do you have any information, Jason? You don't have notes? You have I notes? have no notes. <laughs> he was down to the wire on these fucking movies. I've done, <laughs> I, I've done, that. I've done that before. I've done that before. Um, a little sad trivia here. Uh, Simon Scudamore, who played Marty, killed himself via intentional drug overdose shortly after filming. Um, in fact, the some of the scenes at the end with the jester mask, that's the director. Uh, mm-hmm. So unfortunate. Oh, so he didn't. Uh, he didn't even finish the movie. I think they needed some pickups, or scenes. they had to go back and yeah, had to go they back. Need some yeah, extra they needed stuff. some like inserts or stuff, something like that, and yeah. he had killed himself previous. Um, this movie was originally titled April Fool's Day, but of course they didn't lock it down soon enough. This came out the same year as April Fool's Day, so uh, yeah, got to jump on that shit, guys. Um, we you, you start off interestingly the... <laughs> enough. In, interestingly enough, in I believe it's either China or Japan, it was released on VHS as April Fool's Day. Yeah, I saw that. That's yeah, f- fucking weird shit. Um, uh-huh. uh huh. You start out this movie, you meet the nerd Marty, um, who's about to be seriously pranked by like a terrible group of people. It's all the it's a, it's like the popular people, I guess. Uh, he. <laughs> I, I was laughing right off the bat with this movie. He's attempting to apply this condom, which looks like uh, <laughs> that novelty condom. I don't even know what it was like. It's got like a sex toy built into the condom. I, it looked really dangerous and uncomfortable, but um, yeah, I'll tell you what, he gets real embarrassed here, but God damn, he's got a big old dick on him. He's got a big old dick on him. <laughs> He shouldn't be embarrassed at all. He should have made friends. He should have, all those girls should have been like, fuck, Marty, shit, you know? Uh, I, was, well, I was watching that with my wife. I kept, I was like, don't you look, don't you look at that thing, you pervert. I saw you were looking at it. <laughs> Big old cock. Oh, man. my God. Big that old cock. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn Monroe, uh, who plays Carol, has been in a couple movies we, we've reviewed in the past. She was in Maniac. Uh, from 1980 and on the opposite end of the quality spectrum she was in cute little buggers from 2017 oh uh, my yeah, god what a which is movie. one of the worst movies we've ever watched that's um, awful you got you gotta love the score here you got a harry man manfredini score um <laughs> He's done so much shit. He actually used a lot of stuff. I don't know if it was Friday the Thirteenth. Was it unused? Stop. Was it unused no. or was it actually used in them? It was used in Friday the Thirteenth. That was he used some like main like chase sequence stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey man, he can a do it a bit of original. He can do whatever he wants. If they're still going to cash those checks, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, even yeah, even if the chemical lab, uh, there's this chemical lab is what burns Marty up. Like, um, what was the exact thing they did? Uh, he tampered with uh, 
What did that dude tamper with? To his joint. He had a, a oh. he did something to his joint, and then, and then, yeah, then in, the lab he, explodes. Yeah, yeah. They put something in the in the in the um the beaker on the Bunsen burner yeah. to make it overflow. Oh, and okay. yeah. that caught on fire, and then that my. The oh, acid. Gotta love that rickety uh, shelf with the, the acid this, on top. Like, this fucking it. this love lab. It. This lab was gonna go up anyways. Oh, These shelves gonna are die in that lab. all flimsy, <laughs> uncovered. Not even a lid on any of this oh, shit. My God. And, like acid, just loose. <laughs> but um, on the highest unstable shelf you can get, it was a yeah. Looney Tune. I love it. Yeah. Um. Some of the stuff that is bad about this movie i thought was hilarious they must not have had a very, they must not have figured out how to shoot outside in the dark because it was so dark it was like pitch black it might as well have been just a black screen uh when they're outside for the most part i i, I <laughs> it was so funny because they could have shot you what'd you watch us on um, you where, wherever it was, probably Tubi. On Tubi. Wherever it was free. What, what uh, John mentioned picking up the Blu-ray, and I, I maybe I responded, but I, I don't think I did. Well, but, yeah, uh, I, well, I it was your picture of the Blu-ray. I was like, yeah, oh, I yeah. gotta get that. I have to get. Yeah. That. So, I don't. I know I've seen this movie before, but I don't remember what the picture quality was when i first watched it but i wasn't oh. really that impressed with the, with this release or with this transfer yeah so i thought maybe that whatever transfer you you were watching it on was really dark i mean i didn't really nothing like, really stood out to me like, like what you're talking about if here. they would have just put some animated eyeballs it would have been perfect because like <laughs> i couldn't see shit when they were outside uh, i mean maybe a flashlight here or there or whatever it was just they, normally they shoot day for night with shit like that where they'll like just alter the fucking you know the way it looks right. and, but um whatever um the, there's a caretaker dude uh he made me laugh how easily he was swayed just a beer he was cool like whatever whatever's <laughs> clever uh he gave me one beer um i would have liked to see him live a little longer he was he was a likable character um there's a, a scene in this movie where the a guy shotguns a beer and uh did that look weird to you guys at all? Because he like, he like set, he like flips it in the air, turns it upside down, stabs it with a knife, but then you see him. It's open. No, there's nothing sprays anywhere at any point. It was the weirdest shit ever. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the, um, but uh, lots of fun kills in this movie. My favorite is the woman who is melted in the bathtub when the acid comes out of the spout. <laughs> somehow, yeah. like he yeah. he's really doing some elaborate plumbing shit in this movie um i think she could have saved herself though i think she could have got out of there with just a couple burns but she just couldn't get out of the fucking tub it was like she kept reaching to try <laughs> to turn it off she's like <laughs> yeah. and i just swear to god up. they used to just get the fuck out the same scream like <laughs> three times in yourself. a row while she's like, <laughs> three times in a row the same screen i love it um so funny did you guys think it was weird whenever they kept um they kept they mentioned like if they can make it past noon then april fool's day's over with did you notice that at all oh yeah yeah that's like a british thing evidently like in britain it's over at noon um uh does the one girl fall in some sort of open air septic tank at the end? What the hell is the thing she falls in? I don't know what that is. I was like shit. the same exact thing. Um, yeah. That, that, could, that could only be it. Yeah, it, I mean, there's a lot, just a lot of laughs. There's a part where the, this girl gingerly hits this killer three or four times, leaves the baseball bat right with him, and, <laughs> and runs away, leaving the weapon. Um, that's a pretty important rule. Just don't leave the weapon near the. You keep take it with you. Why don't you ever fucking take it with you? Regardless, um, uh, I think that. Um, I think that they could have just ended it with Marty winning and fading out after he kills Carol laughing maniacally or something because the whole, it was a dream, but Oh wait, he's still crazy. Uh, was pointless for me. Um, it was just an extra step and it lightened up the actual revenge, uh, that this character enacted. So I don't know. They, that was just, they just cut it off there, but seven out of 10 for me. 
uh, would have been a much higher score if it weren't so fucking dark all the time. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, that, I'm thinking that was that was maybe just the transfer. It's probably just like, to be whatever. Um, yeah. Who's next? Go for it, John. All right, cool. All right, so I'm just gonna start off with my rating. I gave it a fucking ten because this film is a ten, and it's not for all the right reasons. It's a ten. Um, this was, to me, this is the last great slasher of the 80s, because it had pretty much all been done. That's why this was a cash grab. That's all this was. This was a cash grab film with the three directors. Caroline Monroe ended up marrying uh, George Dugdale. This was 86, right? Yeah. Oh, boy, you got a lot more. You got a lot of good slashers. But... Oh, boy. holy smokes. 87 oh, yeah. was full of them, I think. Jeez, mm. yeah. Okay, then I retract my statement. <laughs> but, but still, but still, it's still a ten. But for you. still, this is this. Yes, it's still it's still a ten because it's it's great for all the wrong reasons. Um, I love I loved how dark it was because it reminded me of when I first saw it. I saw this on Monster Vision. In the what what year was that original run? Like the years was it like early early nineties, right? Like ninety yeah, three. Like, that's what I was thinking. Like ninety three. Something like that. Yeah, this was like the what what the second movie. I was up at, I was up late, and I saw it. I I caught it at like when Marty first steps out of the shadows, and you see the silhouette of his uh, jester cap, and for some reason that just freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> like it just it was just it was it looked good it was creepy the little jingle bells kind of just added to the creepiness factor and i was like what what is this i don't know what this is um marty was pretty much the perfect nerd uh it's a shame that dude died because i thought he killed that role and i read on imdb that i guess uh the, the at least two of the directors, maybe all three, felt like they contributed to this. <laughs> it took their mom to, it took his mom to tell them that he's had issues all yeah, his life. I saw that. So that's a yeah, that was a bummer. And uh I love the cast, how they try to do the accents. Or there it's a mostly <laughs> it's an almost all English cast. Yeah. And it, it, I think the only one was the girl. Uh, the only one that wasn't was the girl, uh, uh, Donna, Donna With Yeager, the, the blonde. Yeah, Stella. Yeah, Donna yeah. Yeager. That's the actress. Yeah, she was from Texas and just happened to be over there. Um, but it's all coming off as like real thick New York accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I thought I thought that worked out. The two dudes that were buddy buddy. Um, that initially like hey marty we just wanted to say we're real sorry them dudes at the yeah. beginning oh they were hilariously terrible <laughs> um that gut explosion the effects in this movie were pretty decent for what you saw mm -hmm. um even even that stop motion face melt <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the oh, thing about like face melt. the thing I about like that, um, a little bit of flavor. That was the worst effect of the movie, though. That was the worst effect of the movie, though. The gut effect was really cool, but I, the whole yeah. time I'm like, what happened? What's the science behind this? Because he just yeah. drinks that he, beer. He mixed the potion. <laughs> the, but yeah. how did he close a beer up? How did he? He like had to close a beer back up or something. Marty's <laughs> really good at science. You gotta <laughs> yeah. He did get that acid plumbing going. <laughs> yeah, right what no yes he did <laughs> he rigged all that shit up marty's fucking macgyver um let's see what else what other notes do i have i just i really i really love this movie i always did and you know i could i never could remember what it was called after i saw it on monster vision because i didn't see the whole thing i just saw it from a certain thing or maybe i didn't finish it because uh I bought a bootleg DVD at some horror show. It was a VHS to DVD <laughs> transfer. And I loved how it looked. It was, it reminded me of just watching it right off the TV. I thought the shadows were sweet. I liked that You couldn't really see them in the dark. Cause it was real genuine to me. 
You so know? this was like, a really this this was a really rough, yeah. rough film to begin. Like, okay, because oh, I, yeah. I was wondering, I was watching this Blu-ray. I was like, man, this. I mean, it's okay, <laughs> but it it really could have been a you know maybe a DVD transfer. But for the way you guys are making it sound, this looks really good. I just didn't know it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then what? One of those multi movie packs came out that included Slaughter High, Waxwork, Chud Two. Yeah, yeah, I still, so I still have that, that DVD. I yeah. still have that too. I watch it. It's yeah. I haven't bought all, that's a. That's a is, good. That was a, that's a good deal. That was like seven. That's like bucks. one of the best. Yeah, that was like one of the best multi packs I've ever seen yeah. of actual yeah. movies. Drives me nuts. <laughs> Drives me so. <laughs> OCD nuts when they mix them up like that. Like I put just put the, all the thing, put the same things on there. You you've got part two of this and whatever. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Anyways, Jason. Uh, I mean, I I don't really know what to say. I I really like this movie. Um, I like the I like the setting. I like the old school setting. Um, it reminds me a lot of other slasher movies it's uh it's a revenge a nerd you know um the there's not a lot of gore not a lot of effects but john's right they are what's theirs good um i i mean i i like it. i i think this probably falls just under a recommendation for me i don't know why i mean i, I because I guess we're we're drawing that line at, at eight, and and eight is what we consider a, a recommendation. I would give us a seven. It's just right under there. But uh, that's just if I was to recommend it to so, some dude I worked I work with, I probably wouldn't pick Slaughter High. There's a bunch of other movies I'm gonna recommend before this one. Uh, but it's solid slasher. Give it a seven. Right on. Uh, and was this the first? Frank, you said this was the first time you saw it, right? Yeah, I had always seen is that, the, is that correct? The, okay. Yeah, the the VHS. I remember the cover, and I I just never I never grabbed it. You know, it, I, it always seemed like I was like, "What the fuck is this? A skeleton? Is this a movie about a skeleton?" You, I don't want to. Oh, watch. you saw the Mohawk one? Is it the skeleton, uh, or what, he's wearing well, a, a, uh, a mortarboard? Or it's, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, well, with the yeah. cherry bomb. Yeah, and I mean, and now when I look oh, I back on that. it, when I look back on it, I'm like, yeah, I would have rented that now, you know, like that. I would be like, oh yeah, definitely. But back when I was, uh, you know, a teenager hitting the VHS aisle, it, it was like, nah, I'm not fucking with that. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just get Redneck Zombies again. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's safe bet. <laughs> yeah, you always had those. Uh, those stand standbys you know uh let's uh go back to 1983 for sleepaway camp uh surprising it took us this long to hit this one because this is like a i'd consider this like a classic i guess oh yeah um, the summary for this film angela baker a shy traumatized young girl is sent to summer camp with her cousin Shortly the, after her arrival, anyone with sinister or less than honorable intentions gets their comeuppance. Written and directed by <laughs> Robert Hiltzik, uh, who came back and did Return to Sweet Sleep, <laughs> Return to Sleepaway Camp. Um, Jason, you don't have anything. I'm just gonna bypass. Okay. <laughs> yep. Um, Fun fun fact I found out when I was doing uh, research for this is that Bruce Springsteen's sister takes over the Angela role in the sequels. That's fucking weird as hell to me. <laughs> uh, real, real, real quick, how do, how does everyone feel about the sequels? I don't remember them that well. I know whenever Return came out, um, I went through them all, like, yeah. and I for some reason i remember a scene in one of them where there was a chainsaw going but they didn't put the sound in for it or something like that, that I, I, uh, yeah i don't know <laughs> the, the uh i seemed to remember not liking them but uh i do think i like return to sleep wake camp uh just I because I do, I do like them i think we're gonna we're gonna knock these down yeah all right well we'll see I how thought, that goes. i thought they were just i thought they were just okay and i haven't seen four yeah. Oh uh, no, I didn't. I don't. I guess I didn't know there even was a four. Yeah. Re <laughs> return. Return to Sleepaway Camp. They bring back most of the old cast. And uh -huh. I uh, saw An that Angela's yeah. back as you know what's her name? Uh, Felicia. Felicia Fel Rose. Fel Felicia. Um, 
<laughs> anyways they uh they, they evidently shot this in early fall so they had to go around spray painting leaves and grass for continuity doesn't that seem like a pink <laughs> yeah grass? see uh, when it when it first started it was really bright fall colors and then they shot they would go later on in the movie it was everything was still pretty green i was like well they obviously, <laughs> they obviously <laughs> but um I, I think the boat tragedy at the be beginning uh, could have been avoided. Uh, I mean, those kids, oh, yeah. they, were, they were driving this boat and the dude was acting all uptight about like, Ugh, but then he wasn't looking forward at all. <laughs> like there was no. <laughs> and the cameraman was in the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, I, I The mom or aunt, is it the aunt? Is it, it's the, the aunt, aunt, right? Yeah. She is the highlight of this movie for me. Oh yeah. Like the way she says, look what I did. I packed you and your cousin some goodies yeah. for the ride up to it's camp. The, she's the worst part of the movie for oh, me. Oh, I love it. Oh man. Wasn't, it was wasn't very that much the worst part? That, that just explain to me. It's, uh, like, I know she had like, uh, for, uh, uh, let, let me say this. I, can we not spoil the end of this movie? Like I know it's from 1980, whatever. But this I just is a shocker is ending that people yeah, need should... to see. They need right. to experience it. There I'll, might try, be some I'll try to not ruin I will, I, yeah, I will also said, do my best. That, that being said, I know they had to make her crazy. Yeah. But why'd they make her that way? I love okay, it. It's, it's, I, love I mean, it. look it what she did. It doesn't fit the tone <laughs> of the movie. It's so... Exactly. Um, it's so like it's just, exactly. it's awkward. It's out of place. Like that's I'm why like, I like it. That's why I like yeah, it a lot. I, feel like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's, it's like I'm watching. Uh, like you're watching Hectic Knife. <laughs> that's what. That's exactly yeah, what maybe. it reminded me of. Um, like a weird, oh, just a weird, oh, like, like almost a David Lynch thing. Like like that would be yeah. a David Lynch movie. Um, but I couldn't decide. Oh, I, re I remember when I first saw this. I couldn't decide if she was. One of the best actresses I've ever seen, or the worst. She's one of the worst. She crushed she it. Worst. She no, but she, <laughs> but she was extra crazy yeah. though. Uh, like she, because like then I saw then it was years, and then I bought the Blu-ray and watched the interview with her, and I'm like, oh my god, she's awesome. She's not like that at all. Because like I thought maybe she was playing herself. Yeah, like they I don't found know. some chick in an asylum and gave her some money and be like, hey read these words here's some money let's do this let's make a fucking movie <laughs> yeah, i don't know what her motivation for why she delivers the lines the way she does but i fucking love it uh, i'm assuming they told totally her to yeah yeah sheer um, craziness. Uh, <laughs> i okay so i you know i was one year old in 1983 so i don't know if phrases like where i come from we call them baldies was like uh, a cool like and if it was cool to like stand like this cook character is just standing there gross. with his whole staff talking about fucking children uh very openly and uh i don't know if that was cool back then or not but very very it weird was, it was it was guy talk it was considered yeah. guy talk because yeah. you know james earl jones's dad was like uh, 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 that's <laughs> funny and I'm like, Robert Earl Jones, you son of a bitch. Don't you laugh at that. Was that really you're James from, Earl? You're from Maniac Cop, too. Was you that, don't, no. don't laugh at that shit. <laughs> um, okay. Is so, that really his dad? <laughs> yeah, it's Robert I, Earl Jones. Is that his no dad? Lie. No it's way. Really, I don't dude, believe it. Dude, I will... You, <laughs> I Justin believe it's Cash. his name. I believe it's his name, but there ain't no way it's his name. God damn it. Cash at me $100 right now because I bet you $100. Get your ass on IMDb <laughs> and give me my money. No, this is dead. He looks like a make up his same voice, for Christ's sake. Oh, boy. Oh, my I God. Mean, I'm, pulling I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. I'll get the proof. They look alike, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Oh, God, Hang you're on. breaking my heart. Oh. <laughs> I believe you, John. I'm going to go with you on this one. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I must say, I have no choice but to believe it. I don't believe anyone is going to make up a story like that. <laughs> oh, it's just blowing my mind. Oh, uh, you know. Oh, God. 
You know, let's see his bio oh, here. It, it is. Uh, oh, you what have the to fuck? help me to accept it. <laughs> oh my god you this 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 halted it i love it i found his imdb page you just shut the whole show down yeah <laughs> this is big news we can't we can't yeah. move on from this i well, i you know the truth i'll go to wiki because it's probably edited by john there you go. oh get out of here i don't even use wikipedia <laughs> <laughs> oh, appreciate. Here's Robert Earl Jones, father of James Earl Jones and Matthew Earl Jones, grandfather of Flynn Earl Jones. Are you reading on IMDb this? on trivia? Father yeah. of James Earl Jones and Matthew Earl Jones. Yeah. Now, now click James on James. Man click on James Earl Jones. <laughs> Make sure that's the right one. It is. Oh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the same James Earl Jones. <laughs> Could you imagine if there was two of them on IMDb? Oh my god! <laughs> so it would have to be like our James Earl Jones. Oh my god! Darth Vader. Oh my god! All right. Oh. I accept it. Here they are together. <laughs> it. The truth. It is him. <laughs> Holy smokes! How they do look just alike, don't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did I not pick up on that? I didn't know I it either. Know. Like know real, either. Ba- real bassy voices too. You know, yeah, he, they so. look exactly alike. That is crazy. Um, okay, so there's this dude who's a counselor in this movie. His name's Ron. And let's, I, want, I just want to talk a little bit about his wardrobe. Uh, I don't know what he is preparing for, but it seems like, um, I don't know, competition fucking or something. He's got like short <laughs> shorts on. Uh, everything's tight. And I don't, he, he's either going to fight somebody in some sort of sanctioned event or <laughs> I don't know. It's wild. Um, and there's another dude that's wearing like a belly shirt, like a half shirt. And <laughs> oh, Gene. <laughs> it's above his oh, belly. Yeah. It's right underneath yeah, his that and, and there's another guy that is wearing literal Daisy Dukes. Like, for, seriously. Uh, is that the well, one douchebag from Douchebag Cabin? <laughs> I, I believe so. Where they blue shorts? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, when the kid under the canoe is found and a fucking snake comes out of his mouth, I love that shit. That, I mean, I just love how they do that. That mm-hmm. you it, know looked, how, it looked good too. You know it how it really <laughs> did. <laughs> you know how it a snake, really like good. as soon as a corpse uh, hits the ground, man, snakes are at it. They're like, "What? I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go, fucking do what a crawl on it." Gotta crawl in his mouth. Gotta get in that mouth. Um, <laughs> the, uh, get in that mouth. <laughs> the character Mel, uh, the can- uh, I believe he's the head counselor. Is that right? Is that? I think the- he's the owner. Yeah, I think I mean, that's the owner. He doesn't look like he wants to own a camp, does he? He looks like he'd feel more pl- on like at place on a boat with a a cocktail uh but he died three months before the film's release uh from uh lung cancer uh but he's smoking these fucking dog rockets all through this movie man he must have just said fuck it (laughs) fuck it um i don't understand why mel thinks that ricky is the killer though it's kind of like a what was it that he said what was the reason he said, like, "Well, he wa- he's pissed off like the whole movie. He's wanting to yeah. fight everything. <laughs> yeah, he keep messing he's with like Andrew. Super, he's hyper violent. Yeah, uh, so he thinks it's him. Uh, so since we're not going to spoil the end of the movie, um, I just think it was interesting how they did it." Uh, if you want to know, look it up on IMDb. Uh, once you watch but the movie, watch, you should watch it. Yeah, w- watch. Yeah, yeah, because it's interesting, and then you can look up the, how they did the special effects. Because it's, uh, I never knew, I never knew it. Um, it's this is a fun, nostalgic uh, movie, successful in all areas. I think basically, um, it's a seven out of ten, though. I, I don't know. That's how much I enjoy it. Is um, Right there to seven. Go for it, John. Oh, all right, cool. 
So um, I saw this for the first time when I was 16 in, I think it was like, I don't know, 95 or so. Um, rented it. I was like, I heard people talking about this for years. I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to see it. Watched it. Scared the shit out of me. The ending. Just the ending. It was like a slasher. It was like, okay, Friday the 13th, slashers, whatever. Mm. That ending. Jesus Christ. I, I couldn't even finish finish it. Mm. Like, I had to turn it off. Um, it was so such a shock. And the way they did it. And on the v- VHS copy, I got a thing with eyes. Like, in, if you, I, I'm sure you've seen Carrie. Uh, the end with the when they showed a crucifix, it's got those unnaturally white eyes mm-hmm. that scared the fuck out of me too. But um, but the end of this when they're pulling out, those eyes are so weird, and the, the and it's so the face. It's just the it, face. it is weird. Like what? It's what the, is face. the face. Yeah, it's like, a it's a it's, it's, a, it's, it's the a face. Mask. It looks like a wearer. it's a mask. It's a mask. Oh, oh, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was for years. I thought it was a bad super. I remember now. Yeah. I thought it was just like badly superimposed, like Bruce Lee and was the, his last movie when they just slapped a head sticker on someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. Um, but uh, I always had this question: Did Ricky know about Angela? Because in the flashback, when everything is revealed, she, the aunt says, we got to do this before Ricky gets home from his father's. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and also, was was Angela actually, never mind, that would be part of the spoiler. <laughs> never mind, my fault, oh, my, fault. my fault. I had to catch, I am I so think sorry. I, I will. I think I know what you were going to ask, but I can't. I can't answer it. All right, we'll 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 but get I th- on. I think I think <laughs> the answer to your question is yes. You think he? You think he was aware? Oh you no 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 no. no 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 oh, no! Oh, oh okay okay. Oh, your next my fault. question. I don't know. I gotcha. All right, dude. How weird was how weird was it that Meg was like wanting to ride on Mel? How weird was yeah. that? Yeah. That was I mean, good so for him. Weird. Yeah, right on. He seemed but as shocked as... He was so, he so sad. Out of everywhere. He was so sad yeah. when oh. he couldn't find her. But she's like, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, not you, Mag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wasn't that upset. And his, voice, his voice was great. Oh. I loved his voice. And the, the effect they did on him with the arrow... The watch it, watch how that was done. That was crazy how they did that. It worked so well. Like it could have been, I don't know, maybe I don't know how ma- how bad you wanted it to look or whatever. But just the execution of it was awesome. Mm-hmm. I love the uh, Frank the cop, the hilariously bad mustache because he shaved his <laughs> shit when he was done after his scenes, and then they had to do reshoots. <laughs> and he <laughs> had the worst. Fake mustache. It wasn't one of them ones out of the quarter machines from when we were kids, <laughs> but it was pretty fucking close. It, it was like the, the the Hollywood version of it. Um, I thought this the story was great. Um, I like seeing the aftermath of all the kills rather than well, most of the time, but th- this one worked. Like the kid in the canoe, that was that was a good jump scare. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't know what happened. And one thing they ruin, one thing they ruin on um, the Blu-ray is on the silhouette right before Judy gets hers, because it's super clear on what the deal is. Oh. Like a, it's almost it's almost a s- sort of spoiler alert because it was a stand-in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this movie because it scared the shit out of me for so many years. Like, I, I didn't get back on the horse until probably the Blu-ray came out. That's how much it freaked me out. It just freaked me out. Everything about that scene, the noises, the music, the camera work, the scene itself, it was, it was crazy. I give it, it's a, it's a 10. It is a 10. Just like Ooh. the the whole Throwing ending. Throwing them 10s. <laughs> yeah. Oh. them out. 
<laughs> tens. Tens, bitch, tens. Yeah, dude. I it's the whole ending and the plot made any weak part, it brought it right up. That is a massive ending. It's a massive ending. It's one of the but craziest it, it, yes, it's one yes, it is one of the craziest all time endings I have ever ever seen. I, let me and just. I, I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil anything. But have any of you guys seen the Sleepaway Camp light switch covers? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, if I was single and didn't have a wife and kids, that would be every. No, I get you. That's <laughs> yeah. every every <laughs> single every room. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people would be like, "This is seriously just a little overdone." <laughs> yeah. Don't you, think? Yeah. you got a problem. <laughs> uh, but uh, John, you give it a ten. Jason, what do you say? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm kind of right there the same way with this one as I was with uh, Slaughter High. I think uh, it's a great slasher for me. I'm. You, you know what? No, I I, I do give. I I will give this one an eight just because of that. Like I, you have, if if you've never seen this movie before, watch it. It's it's a it's nothing a special. It's a, it's, it's a solid '80s slasher up until the ending. Then the ending just pushes it over. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I I would recommend this to anyone, even if you're not a big fan of slashers. This is a, a it, yeah. it's fun. It's so. The, the the chef going into the oh. the, the boiling water. What great, a great fucking huge, what a great effect. What a huge pot. <laughs> I've never seen <laughs> yeah. a hey, pot. It's that real, though. Is, That's the thing. He's a chair. And then, the, and then the oh, James Earl Jones' dad like, well, I don't know how it how would have happened. I don't understand. What do you <laughs> mean? You climb it up on a chair. But uh, yeah, there's some good kills <laughs> in this movie. It's 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 a. It's your standard slasher with a crazy ending. It's yeah. an eight. Yeah, I mean, I gave it a seven, but it's definitely recommended because, I mean, if you haven't seen it, there's nothing. I can't even imagine seeing it at the time when it came out. Like, oh my uh, god, you would not That's see that not, coming at all. No way, <laughs> right? No I, way. Yeah, I was probably not seventeen, in what, 81? 83, 18. not in eighty-three. Yeah. Crazy, um, yeah, great. That's that's like up there. It's like Cannibal Holocaust the, with the must see movies. This is one of those must. You got to see it. Mm. You know, I mean, got to put it have, in the list of must see. Just to have the frame of reference, I think is. is I mean, if nothing else. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's go to 1997 for Wishmaster. A uh, summary for this film, a demonic djinn attempts to grant its owner three wishes, which will allow him to summon his brethren to Earth. Directed by Robert Kurtzman, uh, mostly known as a special effects guy. He's the K and K and B effects. And uh, he paid <laughs> one of the things I've, I saw in the trivia for him was that uh, he paid Taren, Quentin Tarantino $1,500 to adapt uh, Dust Till Dawn into a screenplay. So he had written this story and he paid Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> so that's a small amount of money because at that time mm -hmm. Tarantino was what he had. Pulp Fiction was out, right? Like was Dust Till Dawn before? Well, I, think they were, I think they were dudes uh, like they were yeah. buddies. Oh yeah, probably. He, I mean, his cre his his credentials alone are insane. If you Ooh. just look him up, uh, yeah. this f was written by Peter Atkins, who's known for the Hellraiser sequels two, three, and Bloodline. Um, and Ooh. this play this movie is chock full of people. Like, there's so many cameos and stuff in this, starting with Angus Scrim as the narrator of the film. Yep. Uh, Robert England gets to play a human being called Raymond Beaumont. Uh, Ted Raimi's uh, smashed to bits in it. <laughs> uh, Dan Hicks was in this, but I didn't see him. He was a custom official. Did anybody catch him? I did not see him. I'm not sure who that, who is I'm Dan Hicks. Sure Danny is. Hicks from Evil Dead Two. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby yeah. Joe no. and him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Vern Schroyer was in this. I believe he is the first incarnation of the Wishmaster oh. when it's wow. like crawling oh, on the crawling. floor. I do. Little, 
and uh oh my god uh, of course you have george buck flower in this he's from they live and uh numerous other things the fog yeah, yeah yeah uh reggie bannister plays a pharmacist uh kane hodder is a guard tony todd uh, plays. But, hold on though. let me just say i like i don't know this is the first movie oh, okay first of all this is the first time i watched this movie oh. second of all i think this is the this is the first time where they really show how short kane hodder really is yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And they even re- they even they even get, they call him like a little short man or something in in the yeah. movie. <laughs> but yeah, I, he looks huge in you know in other movies and mm-hmm. just a little short dude. Yeah. Um, is he real? How how tall is he? He, I mean, he's foot something, I suppose. But yeah, I'm maybe six. Tall. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, short. <laughs> downward angles. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tony Todd plays Johnny Valentine and you get to see Tom Savini pop in at the pharmacy scene. Uh, he's a customer. Um, so, I mean, it's chock full of stuff. Uh, I thought Wes Craven had, was more involved than what he, uh, I thought he directed this film for whatever reason, but he's just a producer. Um, Executive uh, producer. I think he just paid uh, some money for it. Probably. Oh yeah. But um, I did start looking, I did start going kind of down a wormhole with this movie and like, uh, there's, even besides the actors, like the um, the, the crew, like I, I started going down mm-hmm. to their their filmographies, and like everyone has done. A, oh yeah, uh, just a mm-hmm. bunch of horror, like classic horror movies, like even like the the uh, the, the DPs and stuff like that. I worked mm-hmm. on Elm Elm Streets, you know, with Wes Craven and stuff. Like it just yeah, like, yeah. everyone was really talented that was a part of this movie yeah they loaded it up with talented people um even even with the score you got harry manfredini back again um Mm -hmm. and when it's not his music it's some sort of 90s style cock rock i don't really enjoy (laughs) some of it's not really that great um uh, the the best thing about th- this movie and the seek the set the first sequel part two is andrew divoff or devoff how do you say his name uh the guy that plays off Devoff, he plays yeah. the Wishmaster. Um, I love it when he's in his human form. I, I he's so slick and like, I love he's his like voice. The the way, I, like I wish I could. Yeah, I wish I could do his voice though. Like, what? Uh, what do you want? Uh, or what? You know, like. <laughs> Uh, and the special effects are, of course, great. Could be as yeah. can be. Um, the opening scene, there's tons of wild shit. A skeleton pulls itself out of a guy's body. That's great. That looks <laughs> great. I mean, you could tell. You could tell he was. He's all about effects. Like, this. oh yeah. You could um, tell he he done his homework. I mean, they spent so just the guy that's a snake. There's a guy that's like transforming into a snake that had to have taken hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And he's only like, what, two minutes in the fucking movie. Um, they probably the, stopped all projects for this one. Yeah. It's this movie is written really well too. Like the interaction between Reggie Bannister and Buck flower is uh-huh. so funny. It is such a great uh-huh. uh, back and forth. And uh, you know, Reggie dies pretty quick, but uh I uh, the you know the when he, when Andrew Divoff or Devoff or whatever does these um, like monologues, it's it's what he's all about. The Wishmaster is more about monologues than anything else. <laughs> There's whenever he's he gets super villain. Yeah, when he has the <laughs> after he kill he kills Reggie Bannister and then he has this interaction with Buck Flowers because he's the one that wanted him dead. Uh, and he just runs off and while he's running off he says this whole thing and i wrote it down uh run insect run and tell those you will what you will tell them there is something loose in their city something which feeds on wishes and this dude's fucking all the way down the street and then he takes a long long drag off the cigarette and then he comes back and tell them quickly while you still have a soul yeah (laughs) it's all the two blocks down before he's even done um (laughs) 
some shots uh, in this movie really seemed like they were pulled right out of a late night Skinamax softcore uh, thing. Though, like it, it, all of them, kind of have that. I think. Like, I don't know what it is. Like a, a suspense kind of a sexy suspense kind. Of, ooh, they're making love, <laughs> or whatever. Um, but it, I mean, I looked up the the cinematographer and his credits include nightmare on elm street nightmare on elm street 2 shocker mom and dad save the world silence of the hams um, all these things that i like um silence of the hams have you ever seen silence of the hams no it's I uh it's satire it's like mel a mel brooks kind of movie um yeah but i love seeing the wishes go sideways um the police station scene is fantastic uh watching this guy manipulate people is so entertaining um and there i'll be honest man there's so many cigarettes in this movie <laughs> it was like triggering my like vape habit i'm like oh god they're fucking everyone all the time um and tony todd was like i thought he shined in the few little m moments he had as mm -hmm. johnny he put a lot of mustard on that um character yeah and um robert england's party scene huge highlight in this movie uh, there's so many practical effects that are great there's some questionable cg but overall it's like a rock show sequence at the end um robert england like vomits up this um thing uh, i don't know what it is but it's weird as fuck um a guy gets his face smashed smashed in with a mace which is <laughs> uh really stylized um I, I give this a nine out of ten i like it a lot it's one of my favorites um who's next john yeah wishmaster this is one i saw when when it came out i really liked it a lot um i remember the fangorias leading up to it it's like never before has freddy jason candy man <laughs> And oh, yeah. I think it was, it was it, and I thought there was someone else like, and it was like, never have they died on the same screen. <laughs> See, Wishmaster, you know, and I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> let's do it, you know, um, and. So was you disappointed? Oh, no, <laughs> I loved it. It was I mean, it's, it's, it sounds better than what it actually is. <laughs> no, I mean, it was way awesome when I was younger. It's a little bit not as awesome now, but it's still it's still really cool. I'll I will watch I will voluntarily watch it. Um I love the Angus Scrim monologue. I'm a huge Phantasm fan. Um so anytime I can hear him, it his voice is really cool. Uh Joe Pilato was uh the drunk guy, the drunk crane operator. He was uh, Captain Rhodes in uh, Day of the Dead. Oh. Super brief. Super brief. Um, what was that? What when they when uh, the chick's uh, friend zone guy when he was killed? The cop exa examining him. What did he say? He said, "Computer malfunction. Must have been a hell of a computer." I was like, "Well." <laughs> <laughs> the dumbest lines I ever heard in my life, but it was well. So yeah, I don't know what that computer. That's that '90s computer science that you see so often. Mm. We got a gym. Uh, well, put it in the laser beams, and then of course the readings will come back on our IBM side. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but yeah, this is this is really this is a real good horror movie. Uh, Andrew Devoff, he is really cool. I've liked him since, uh, I think the first movie I saw of his was Graveyard Shift with the big, with the rats mm -hmm. and the bats. All right. Uh, he was, he was a cool crony in that. Um, I don't know. He's just, he's got a, he's got a screen presence and he's super, like, like Frank said, he's super slick. Like he could, like that chick, the, 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 um, the, uh, was store clerk the girl she was smoking hot mm. like she and she was like she had the vapors you know, she was like, Ooh, <laughs> shit. you know like she was she was getting the vibe off of him um it was he, like he walks into a room he, he commands he commands the room mm. he's a he was a really cool dude 
uh, to pick the play the human gin. Um, the mass chaos at the end, loved it. Uh, reminded me, I can't remember which came out first. What year? What what year did this come out? This was uh, let me see here, ninety seven. Ninety seven. I think didn't Event Horizon come out before it? I don't know. I have not seen that. No, nah, but you know what? <laughs> they it came, they came out the same year. I must. I think I saw Event Horizon first. Yeah, we'll address that <laughs> at a later date, Frank. <laughs> Sorry, what, man. Nah, what, uh, a, this is this is a solid nine of a film. Um, I pretty much covered everything. It, the, it's an effects film. It's by an effects guy. This so is did, why you did watch he the did movie. he was he hands off or was he hands on 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 the effects? Did he just he direct, or was it. he? He probably supervised it. He probably he got, got his hands in there. there. Yeah, I'm sure he got his hands in there when he had to, but he was directing a movie. He's like, "This is why I. This is why I'm a third of this studio." You know, it's like all yeah, of you all right. people, interns, students. I don't give a fuck. Get in here and make this snake guy for me. Yeah. Make this skeleton Harry housing itself out of this guy's skin. That was a badass effect. That is so great. Super pup, like a great puppetry to make that thing work. No CG. They could have CG'd it and it could have been bad. Like, mm -hmm. it was, it was, a, it was a really good effect. I yeah. The CG is all the bad. Sometimes the CG is almost criminal. Like <laughs> whenever. But it, was so, but it was so early. I mean, you know, so early in, in the CG yeah times you know what i mean like every all but, of it none of like, it was redeeming like, like the kane hodder when he dies he shatters <laughs> and it's like yeah. it looks like a, a, oh, a yeah. one of those 3do's like a <laughs> you know like the intro to the 3do yeah something like that but um jason yeah uh so again first first time watch um and when i was going down through it and seeing all these names that were, that were involved with it, it, it almost, I almost felt kind of ashamed that I haven't watched this movie yet. Uh, I don't have, are, are any of the sequels worth, worth watching? Two's, I like two better than one, I think. Um, really? What yeah. is it? After, do they release after this? Two, is it a three pack? Four like pack. Through, oh, I, four I have pack. a four. Yeah. yeah. Is that all of them, or is there? Yeah, more I think so. I th th unless they made a five, they might have made a five. Um, well, it might have been like a sci-fi sci channel original. Or four something. is <laughs> four is like bare. It's worth watching after you've because they set up a formula. Like it's always the same thing. It's like he's trying to get these three wishes granted. So is he, it the same guy? Is it in the first it, two? It is. Yeah, three. I think is still. Three is still worthwhile. Four, I have never seen. So I've don't I you only, have? Do I you have, have these? Uh, yeah, I've got the whole set, okay. but I haven't watched four yet. <laughs> but is this part of the Vestron collection? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I can sort of see the the cover. Um, well, I, I should I should have already known all this because when when I finished this movie, I it, it was good enough to where I wanted to buy it. Uh, the, the the effects are out of this world they just knocked those out of the park and it's just i, I like the character I, I, both mm. of them the human side and is mm. they're they, he they look good they sound good the sound design the sound production on this sounds great um and it, it also helps that uh i have window air conditioners and when, when i watch this this is why i like the first first time you know, since last winter that I haven't watched a movie with this loud ass air conditioner going right. on. So I was able to actually hear everything really well. And, uh, yeah, I, I would, I would say I give this an eight. And if you say you know, two, two is even better or as good, I'll, I'll probably be picking this collection up. I reckon. Yeah, it. It's definitely fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the CG stuff is bad, but it, yeah. it's also nice to, to kind of see, look back. The evolution. On. Oh yeah, yeah. It definitely. It's kind, of it's kind of fun. Yeah. Like I can, uh, like there, I don't know. Ten years ago, if I would watch that, I'd been like, "This movie, this piece of shit movie. Look at these effects." <laughs> now I could, now I could sit and watch it and appreciate. It. 
yeah. you know, where it got yeah. started. All right. Well, let's get into Bubba Hotep. Uh, this one won the poll, beat out Phantasm. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Um, uh, and it was a comeback, too, wasn't yeah, it? Phantasm I believe so. was in the lead forever. Yeah. yeah. And funny thing, this was also directed by Don Coscarelli. So, yep, right. right uh, yeah. Regardless. Um, summary for this film Elvis and a black JFK stay in a nursing home where nothing happens until a wayward Egyptian mummy comes and sucks out the old people's souls through their a holes. <laughs> it literally <laughs> said, I didn't read that before. Uh, the two decide to fight back. Um, written by Joe R. Lansdell and Don Coscarelli. And I hope they're making this prequel. Um, Bubba Nosferatu, Curse of the She Vampires. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, um, I've been here. I've been here in rumors. Yeah, sequels, long prequels. time. Yeah, 2017. Yeah, this came out. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I, th- I think yeah, 2017 was when they the IMDb has it listed, and it's in pre-production still, so it's probably just not going to happen. But um, you, of course, you got the Bruce Campbell as Elvis slash Sebastian Hoff. Awesome. Maybe maybe when Bruce Campbell is actually old enough to be in a nursing home, right? Well, it's supposed <laughs> and to be. He a, needs some money. It's supposed to be a prequel, they'll, they'll so, it. so it could oh, be okay. any point, any point in time. Um, they better hurry. Yeah, got to get it. Uh, Ossie Davis says, "Jack, uh, you might remember him from Grumpy Old Men, Do the Right Thing." I remember back in the '90s, he was in like everything. So, um, and then Reggie Bannister uh, makes an appearance in this film also as a rest home administrator. Um, evidently, the original story had a female character who thinks she's John Dillinger post sex change. Uh, that <laughs> that would have been. A, a, an interesting concept. <laughs> um, I think the scarabs look good. We've got KNG effects again on this. That the it, they could have really went sideways with those bugs, man. Uh, but I think they look good. Um, it, the, they kind of, I feel like they kind of dropped the ball with the bugs. Really? Because be yeah. this was a this was a really low budget movie, though. Yeah, so they did I it for. Like, they looked good but, for what they were. Kenji yeah, did it for it, free. It, 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 <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the movie cost this is, their, five, this is a favor. The movie cost five hundred thousand dollars to make, so they did it as a favor Pocket to Cos- Coscarelli just because of his, you know, this is the phantasm dude, but I didn't think the mummy looked. I mean, the mummy, it looked good for the most part. <laughs> uh, it couldn't move its mouth, which was weird. But uh, until it, until the end when it opened up like a, <laughs> whatever that, whatever happens. Um, I, don't get me wrong. I love Bruce Campbell playing Elvis. I think it's perfect. But good Lord, there's so much front loading at the beginning of this. I don't need all that. You could have condensed the first half hour into 15 minutes, give me that, and then get to the cool shit, fill that other 15 minutes up with the cool shit. Like, uh, you know, more of that Kimasabi guy. Cause he was, <laughs> he was hilarious. <laughs> that old guy with the cowboy gun. Um, get up. Oh and, yeah. Uh, hilarious. Asshole. Um, Asshole. I think the best <laughs> thing about this movie, uh, <laughs> is, uh, Ozzy Davis and uh, Bruce Campbell's interactions, uh, especially oh, yeah. like a, a real life six shooter from Puppet Master. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, he was a he was a cowboy actor. Yeah. I think that was his yeah. deal because, like, when they showed his room, he saw all these posters, and I feel like I felt like he was. They're probably really yeah. him too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that's, yeah. that's how I always figured. Um. I haven't seen this movie for a while, so I do not did not remember the whole Bruce Campbell Aussie Davis bathroom scene where he's explaining where Aussie Davis explains how a soul can be extracted out of any orifice in the human body. <laughs> I mean, every scene with these guys is great. Uh, I love it when they're he he goes <laughs> he goes hey you want a ding dong? And he's like. <laughs> He's like, not mine. I mean, like a chocolate ding dong. I, I guess, guess my good chocolate. <laughs> he says, yeah. I guess, he says, I guess. That way my, since they died, <laughs> I, guess, I guess mine would be chocolate now that I've been died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a few times I thought Bruce Campbell looked like an old Kurt Russell uh, more than an Elvis. 
it, it happened <laughs> several times. I, I, I got in, that. I got into a weird thought spiral uh, after that, thinking about what <laughs> it would have been like if Bruce Campbell played an old Kurt Russell in a movie for whatever reason. That would be, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't think this is technically a horror movie. I, I would call yeah, it, it, a, it. Yeah. A supernatural it's, spaghetti western comedy is what I yeah, would say. It's, it's, it's the people involved with it and yeah. I guess the mummy part. Yeah, it's a monster movie, I guess. Um, uh, I read several one-star reviews just to see what people who don't like this movie think about it. And generally, they just seem to, to be folks who don't know how to have any sort of fun in life. Oh. Um because this is like a nine, this is this is a nine out of ten for me. This is a fun movie. It's just what a movie should be. I think. Um, I don't know. What do you think, John? Um, I actually went and saw this at a premiere in a little town outside of Pittsburgh called Oakmont. They had this little two screener theater, and Coscarelli was touring the film, and that was one of his stops. So me and a bunch of friends, we got to go see it. Got to meet Don Coscarelli afterwards. Um, it is a really great movie. It's Bruce Campbell's finest hour. It's like acting wise, not like physical, like not evil. Evil Dead in this is not on the same level. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this is this is like real. I'm not to be a dick. Like real, like dramatic <laughs> acting, not horror acting. It you know is. I'll tell you what. This it's. This, so, yeah, this is just a weird movie. This is a weird story, and it actually has several touching parts in this movie. Several, yeah. like this is just a, a, like real, a, it's a bizarre it well story. Written. Like the story yeah. doesn't make any sense at all, but they turned it into it great works. storytelling. Like, it yeah. absolutely wrote well. Like they, this, yeah, just hearing you describe this movie, it's just like what. I would probably never even gave this movie a chance, like if I didn't, you know, or I know who the people were. <laughs> yeah. Right. I was like, wait a minute, Bruce Campbell plays an old Elvis. Right. I saw it's, that. It, I saw that, and I stopped. I was like, I'm fucking there. That is like it just, great. just the re- the relationship they have. Like I just want to watch them go on more adventures. Like, oh it, yeah, it was it was awesome. Hey, hey, Sorry, man. John. I, I Mar- Maryland. No, it's cool, dude. It's no, no worries. I like when he's like when he asked him about. Maryland <laughs> is it between you and me? Wow! Right. Like Ozzy <laughs> Davis, <laughs> Ozzy <laughs> Davis was so lovable in this movie. He was like a sweet old man. Mm-hmm. He was a sweet grandpa. I got like, a bag of sand up there. <laughs> yeah, and he and then he had the scar too. He had a scar. Yeah, and was like, wait a minute. What if? I mean, come on. Elvis is really alive, right? Mm-hmm. What if JFK is? is <laughs> this <is> really, <laughs> he really like, died. Seriously, yeah. There's a fucking mummy running around. Why can't that be? Why can't that? Be, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why can't that be real? Uh, in the in the the realm of that film, um, Bruce Campbell nailed Elvis. I, you know, it was a, it was it was. I just loved it. I loved his acting. It was. It's a it's a really good film. You, you, Bubba Hotep, you hear that name and you think, what the fuck is that? And if you just a read good the old description, boy. yeah, <laughs> good, yeah, I liked how they explained it. Um, <laughs> if I had one thing I didn't like, it was the hieroglyphics that came out of his mouth. Oh his yeah. Mouth. yeah, I thought that was kind of needless. Was, whatever, it could have just been subtitled, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, it's it's a mummy. JFK is black and alive, and Elvis is really alive. <laughs> um, it's a really cool what if story, and then I really love um, the Elvis character reflecting on his life and realizing like he was real fucked up for what he did. He he learned like he did messed up things to people and his family and stuff. Like that was, you know. That was a really good take on the character. Who knows what if Elvis was alive, what he would be doing. Uh, it was creative, unique, well written, and well acted. It is a fucking ten. 
Man, he's dishing them out. I was waiting it's for It's a ten it. of the film. It is a great film. It is. <laughs> I started laughing. I did. I did I'm just listening. To yeah, it. dude. <laughs> it's one of the most creative movies I've ever seen. Like he was very I'll, apprehensive I'll about dropping that last ten. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. That was planned. So did you? <laughs> did you give everything a ten? You, nah. No. Nah, <laughs> nah, I gave Master a nine. Okay. These were good movies. Oh, These were some yeah. good movies we got this time. This was like a solid slate. This was a solid slate <laughs> of movies. Like I, I like every single one of them a ton. <laughs> All right. Well, Jason, what's your thoughts on this movie? I. Okay. So. Every time I watch it, I start for whatever reason. I, I started off thinking it's just a just an okay movie. By the time it ends, I'm like amazed every time I watch it. <laughs> like it's I don't know. It's just like the storytelling. It's that adventure. It it reminds so a couple of non horror movies that uh, kind of do the same thing to me. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Big Fish, Tim yeah. Burton. That story. Never telling. seen it. Um, okay. Second, second hand lions. I've never a couple seen couple old one. dudes. I've seen bits and pieces of it, but I can't. Really, really good. St- it's the two old, two it's old. It's that dudes relationship. On, on adventures. Yeah. yeah. It reminded. Like that, that's adventures. why I was thinking. Uh, gone fishing. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen Gone, gone fishing. fishing. It's oh, Joe man. Pesci and Danny Glover. Uh, yeah, it's a weird combo. Oh, it's a good movie, dude. They keep losing Is their it? boat and shit. It's hilarious. <laughs> It is it is and because Danny Glover is plays a really dumb guy. It's like oh really it's perfect. Oh, oh wow. it's good. he's like I don't know boy. <laughs> you know they lose the boat and he has, Joe Pesci gets all pissed off. It's just funny man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. But yeah, it's uh, it's the relation the relationship, the story, the adventure they go on. Um, I I could have used more mummy. They could have maybe gave him a little bit more screen time. Or uh, I I don't know not not that that's a complaint like he's in it enough like he's it, it's he he's a character in there but I think the the highlights definitely the the main attraction is the the two Elvis and JFK yeah um, I but I think I agree I give this movie a ten I, every every time it ends I'm like that that's a great that was amazing. <laughs> And it, it does it to me every time, like three or four times now. So, ten out of ten. There you go. And wow. and is and it's not a bad Elvis, man. I mean, yeah. it is good. Right. Yeah. Like his impression, he, he, he yeah. rushes it, and he always that chin was so natural. Like he had an Elvisy face. Like yeah. they were the prosthetics were awesome. Like yeah, he just the, it was. It, it's Oscar worthy in my eyes. I, per, I never person. even noticed. Um, previous viewings that they don't use any elvis music they just use stuff that sort of sounds like elvis and the, yeah. they don't even use real elvis movies when they like do like the uh the flashback or whatever i mean <laughs> yeah they just use some shit Budget. that looked kind of like it was elvis and i mean that it worked because you don't even pay attention to that shit you would think you'd be like they didn't <laughs> even play a fucking elvis song but um they just breeze it right there's too much shit to pay attention to that but um <laughs> anyways uh we we are gonna be doing a club episode next week and i believe unless things have changed let me check it <laughs> i don't think it has though there was pretty good lead on that on that poll um, yeah candy man's looking like the winner oh yeah yeah, I I've, I always want to be, be like, hey, everybody that didn't vote for uh, Candyman, let's pick one of these other movies and give them a run for their money. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's what we'll be doing. You know what? I think we we should go back to doing is uh, with those poll movies, movies that we we haven't seen before. Okay. Not not everyone, but just a movie that I haven't seen. And same, same for everyone else. And then, yeah. because I mean, uh, I've my picks have won the last two times, but I mean, it was Candyman and Bubba Hotep. Like they've pretty, been, they've yeah, been pretty big movies. Big People yeah. see those names and they'll just click on whatever movies they're into. It. So maybe, yeah. maybe let's pick, start picking some more obscure movies. 
Yeah, that's a good thing. So we'll just, if we're able to find yeah. them, if, if right. you've got to be able to find them, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Just kinda, somewhere. Just kind of pick something random on Tubi. <laughs> yeah. But um, well, yeah, we'll, let's not let's not take <laughs> trash. But I, like, no. I know there's some movies out there I haven't seen that I've just avoided for whatever reason. Yeah. I'm picking Here's the Turkish a, Satan. That's the the, the Turkish oh, uh, Exorcist. <laughs> oh, God. I've actually seen some yeah. of that. Um, yeah, Frank, oh, yeah, Frank either too. played a video or yeah. shared something. Yeah. yeah, it's funny as hell. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing that. Uh, we'll be doing Candyman, and then we're going to uh, return to our RPG uh, game and see how that goes. Uh, I've got some stuff planned out for that. So, um, oh God! We'll, we'll see now, now that I know how child. to play it. <laughs> we killed a child. <laughs> we'll see if you guys if you guys yeah, get out of that <laughs> if you guys get out of that house or whatever. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, we're so. We're <laughs> what is this? It's terrible. supposed to be a, a a slasher game, right? And we're, we we ended up we're the slashers now. We're the monsters. <laughs> it's yeah, a horror game. <laughs> We really turn out to be werewolves. I feel like uh, we should just start werewolf. over. We didn't get too far. We should just start No, over. I like how it's going. And I've, uh, I've uh, taken, I, I, when I listened, villain. when I listened back through, I made sure to take accurate notes of uh, hit points and uh, weapons and stuff. And Oh, okay, cool. So I've got all the information strategy. to continue it correctly. <laughs> and uh, since you guys made some, Zigs and zags I wasn't planning for. <laughs> we zigged when we should have zagged, man. Shit. I've made some uh, adaptions to what I had planned, but anyways. You uh, doc? No, we uh, just went in and that <laughs> shop. We killed the eyeless dude, and he did attack us, and we hatched with him in the yeah, fucking head. Yeah. And here we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see, we'll see how everything goes uh, next week. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. What was those, those other things? Were it rabbits? Didn't we kill some rabbits or something? No, they were melting toads. Oh, no, be toads. that's what it was. We, we still disturb wildlife. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, oh, thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. All right, I'll guys. see you guys. We'll see you. Later. Last round of. Round of-